tackle. We all love gear and tackle, right? The more the better. So, Chad's yeah, going to talk about tackle here in a minute. What if there's a secret lure out there that's going to catch all the fish? Anybody believe that there's a lure out there that's going to catch more fish than any other out there on Lake Winnipeg? Certain days there is. Some days there is. Some days that lure ain't going to catch a darn thing. So, you're exactly right. There's a lot of different lures that will work, and some days you've got to have that lure or you're not going to catch it, especially the bigger ones. You'll see some guys that have to have a big lure or have a, a live target, a blue live target golden shiner, or a clack and wrap, you know, a certain clack and wrap. But if you got that lure, you're going to catch a couple of really nice fish. If you don't, you probably ain't going to catch any. It all depends. But there are no secret lures. It's like there's no secret white planks out there either. If I can only bring week, the sum we did new this year, all three of us decided, what are your five, five favorite lures? If you can only go up to the five lures, what would they be? Oops. So mine is a golden shiner, live target, blue one. I will use that almost all the time. If it's a full front, uh, use that for half an hour and not catch anything, then I'll switch to whatever else I can find. Chicken wraps, very popular. Bee fish and tackle blade baits. Uh, pink and white is very good. Pink and white is a very good color up there. Lindy rattling flyer and chubby darters. Those are my five favorite lures on Winnipeg. And everybody's got different ones. Chad, do you like to go As uh, Scott was saying, this is just kind of personal preference. And um, a big thing when you're fishing, and you, a lot of you know this, is confidence. What's going to be something that you're confident in? And uh, that's kind of why we looked at these five favorite lures. Not that they're the secret lure, it's just, hey, everybody's got their own personal opinions. And um, for me, I like the uh, live target at the top of the list, the blue one. See a theme running here that's uh, that's showing up several times. Uh, another favorite of mine is taking a gold colored live target, painting some perch stripes on it, maybe a little uh, orange on the belly, make it look like a little perch. That's an option. Um, RJ Lures makes some great painted blade baits. Not very big. But they make a lot of noise, a lot of rattle, a lot of vibration. Great lures up there. Pink and white's my favorite. Um, flutter spoons have been a popular thing lately. There's a lot of brands out there. Um, some different fish bones ones are some of my favorites. And um, the old standby, the uh, Buckshot Rattle Spoon by Northland Tackle. Again, just some, some of my personal favorites. <laughs> Mine are totally different. Yeah, I yeah. like, my number one lure is the blue live target. <laughs> so, totally different than everybody else. I, I don't like to be the same. Uh, another, I, my favorite two lure setup is the live target and a macho minnow. I like to have that vertical and then the horizontal with the live target just for a one-two punch. Um, the new UV buckshot rattle spoons, I got some of these sitting up here, they have them upstairs. Uh, the UV is, is a pretty hot item right now. Um, hopefully the fish can see them better, or it's either that or just we can see them better. I don't know which one yet. But those are nice. Uh, flutter spoons, like Kyle mentioned, there's tons of them. They have some new BMCs upstairs, the tinglers. Um, and the lure last year, Brad's boy, uh, what's Brad's last name? Yeah, no, Mac. Uh, oh. Macwitz. Yeah, Brad That's Macwitz. Good. His boy, I gave him one of these. How old is he? He's probably 10. 10. He caught the biggest fish of his life using a live target crappie, the larger size. And I, it was about, it was over 10 pounds, I believe. So he was tickled pink, and he must have thanked me a hundred times for that lure, and he probably has it framed at his house. I talked to him today, he still still has not let his dad touch it. <laughs> <laughs> so he wasn't going to let his dad use that lure. You know, as you can see, live target. If you don't have a live target, uh, 
you're wasting your time. Um, I bet most of the larger fish are going to come on that. And it could be just because, you know, if everybody's using that lure, that's what they're biting. But they're using it for a reason. And it's not always the color. I think it has a lot also to do with the rattle inside it, the way it sounds, the shape of the lure. The whole, it just has the whole package. So they have lots of nice colors. There's a form for custom ordering. We'll talk about that later. Got to have proper gear when we go up there. Uh, long rods, nice backbone. Joe has done a great job of stocking what we need upstairs. But this one is 36. You know, for me, this is probably the shortest rod I want to have is a 36. That works pretty, you know, it's got a good backbone on it. And it's got a good, you know, enough tip in there where if that fish surges, you still got enough pressure on it. And that's important when we're fishing with barbless hooks. And all the way up, I think that's probably more like a 42 inch or a 48. 42. You know, outside, guys are using four footers even. So it's real important, long rods, medium heavy, medium to heavy. Um, lots of great rod choices here. And we'll have a lot upstairs and Joe's got that special going on. Um, this, well, it's that, top of reels. I like to use my summer reel when I'm using, when I'm up at Lake Winnipeg. The reason for that is I got a better drag system on it. Um, you want to be careful with the summer reels. You want to make sure they don't have a lot of grease because if it gets really cold, that grease is going to get thick. You just want a light coating of oil. Okay, so you want to be careful there, but it's got a great drag. You want to make sure to watch your drag, make sure it's all set before you start fishing in case you get that big fish on because they hit like a freight train. Uh, what do I like to put on my rod? I like to use Fireline Crystal myself. Uh, I usually use 10 4, but sometimes we use 14. You know, it's whatever you use. The fish up there are not lying shy for the most part. The water, a lot of times, is pretty tinged. It's off color. Um, it's clear. It's not. Um, it's not tannic. You know, it's not brown. It's kind of greenish, murky. So, but and then I like to take the smallest swivel I can find, and then I'll tie on a piece of fluorocarbon. And the reason I like to do that is, fluorocarbon is a little bit stiffer. Okay, and when I'm using uh, spoons, it's not going to flip up as much and catch on my line. Also, I kind of like to know when my fish is getting close to. A lot of guys will put the leader equal length to the ice so they know when their fish is at the bottom of the ice so that they're, they're real careful now. A couple of ways I thought about it. Right guys? Yep. Any? About six inches more than the depth of the ice. When you see that swivel come up through the hole at the surface, you know you're six inches from the bottom of that hole. You about six it. feet long then. Some days, <laughs> about six feet long, some days, yep. Depends how many extensions you have on your arm. So, you know, just a bunch of the lines. Uh, I really like the Berkeley tri uh fluorocarbon, and the fire line. So lots of great lines out there, too. got to read the directions. This could be you guys. That's why we're all going. So everybody, let's all practice our pose for a big fish. <laughs> yeah, you got to hold it out here. Get your fingers behind. So, I mean, be prepared. That's all I can say up there. Uh, like I mentioned, the swivel. And make sure to pay attention to details. Make sure you tie your knots properly. Uh, fluorocarbon, you want to make sure you wet the line and everything when you're using mono. Make sure you're, here we're catching probably your biggest fish of your life, you don't want to mess it up. So pay attention to details. Uh, I know Scott and Kyle like to use the Aquatech swivels. Um, they're neutrally buoyant, clear. Anything to add guys? Good quality snaps. Good quality yeah. snaps. You get a big fish, you don't want that snap coming loose. And it's happened. I know guys can tell stories of that. You don't want that. You want to make sure you got a good stout snap that's going to hold when you set that hook on that big fish. Some of our favorite lures, lots of lipless crankbaits. Uh, they all catch fish. 
They're all phenomenal lures. We sometimes like to upgrade with some triple grips. So you can look at those if you're interested. Might give you a little bit of extra, you know, it's just got this gap. And obviously, uh, whoever was fishing with that did pitch their barbs down, so they're going to get a ticket. <laughs> Spoons. Like we said, the UV buckshot, the matcha minnow. There's some other great spoons out there, jiggy <coughs> spoons and others. And these are the flutter spoons here. Um, some of these are specialty items. We may have it here in the store. And some of these they have up in Canada too. So if we miss something there, we can pick stuff up there on the way too. We'll probably, a lot of guys stop at Pro-Am also. The difference between your, your spoons in the first slide that Chad was showing and the flutter spoons, the first one, or first slide, they're weighted. They're heavier. They're just going to yep. bounce right to the bottom. The flutter spoons are a lot lighter. They're about the thickness of a spinner blade, and they're going to slow this, they're going to fall very slowly. And I know Joe's done a good job of getting a lot of those in inventory. Uh, these are the blade baits that a lot of guys had a lot of great luck here in the, last year and the year before. Uh, there's a good video out in, in um, in depth, outdoors, has a great video on Lake Winnipeg. Jig and a minnow combination is not out of the picture. It's not all about the live target and those other lures, although they shine. Sometimes it's just a jig and a minnow. Uh, actually, I want to go back. I think that's coming up anyway. Uh, so, dead stick live minnows, so they call them Wileys up there. A lot of guys bring those. Um, so you want to bring a, at least a bucket. Depending upon the temperature, you want it, might want an insulated bucket or keep it warm so it doesn't freeze all the way up on you too. So I know a lot of guys with the live minnows, uh, the last couple of years, were taking the bait pucks. Take that bigger size bait puck, throw a handful of minnows, just a little bit of water in there, keep it closed, that way it's, you keep it in your pocket, it's not necessarily gonna freeze. Bait. Um, Tipping with artificial meat can increase your effectiveness. Done a lot of that. Live minnows, salted shiners. We're at the end of the season now, going up there in March. They may or may not have salted minnows up there, the shiners. So back home, we've had really good luck doing our own. And the nice thing is the shiners up there have been in the freezer all year long. They're old, they break apart pretty easily. Two nights before you leave, stop at Shields and buy a couple scoops of fathead minnows. You uh, drain all the water, throw in some pickling salt, they're done. They're going to die. Um, and then you're going to take those and drain the water. Then you're going to put them into a plastic baggie, lay them flat, take a cookie sheet, lay it in there, lay a couple bags on the cookie sheet, put another cookie sheet on top. So you don't want to squish them, but you just want to little bit of weight on there to try to keep them flat okay you don't want them all curved and everything and then uh, then you put them in the freezer overnight they'll be nice and frozen keep them frozen <clears throat> and then they're all ready to go you just hook them on it's great for if you want to just use a you know a, a head of a minnow you just pinch the head off and you're all ready to go so we've had really good luck with that I know some guys too have goofed around They'll put a little bit of Coke in there and freeze it with Coke, just to have them flavor. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Dr. Pepper. <laughs> a tracker and sense. Um, great stuff. This is Pro Gear. Uh, I know, I'm not sure if they still have it in stock upstairs. They're all out. Uh, when we get to Canada, we'll be at pro Am Tackle. They have a lot of it in stock. We can pick it up there. Um, if you don't like your buddies, you have some samples here, what you can do is tell them that they have to put a little bit on their finger and rub it really good into the lure, all right? So, take a whip with us and, and you'll know what I'm getting at. But if you really like them, I wouldn't suggest them do that. Just those buddies you don't care for. If, if the bite is really on up there, if those fish are really moving, they're really active, you're catching fish, forget about throwing minnows on. Just put a little bit of that pro gear on. A lot of days, that's all you need. Yep. Um, Northland has an impulse. They have perch eyes, and these are minnow heads and artificial. I haven't had a chance to try them, but I'm going to give them a try this year, so that's another thing just to try. 
Um, the plastics are probably going to stay on there better. And there's different tricks. You can trick out some of your spoons with a, a snap instead of a um, split ring. You could put a dual snap on there so that you can take the treble hook off and then you spear the middle head or the plastic on there and then put it back on. That way it won't come off. Tackling equipment, electronics, have to have electronics. I mean, they're, and it's so much fun plus. So uh, have a great flasher unit or the LCD sonar. Um, you want to have your GPS so you know where you're going so you don't get lost in case there's a whiteout. Map chips are great, and there's some great mapping apps. Um, on your phone, you can get the Navionics chip or the Navionics app. I'm not sure if that will cover Canada, though. I haven't checked on it. I don't think it does. Yeah, you, you can get the Canadian, the, the Canada chip if you want from Navionics. Two flashers. Uh, last couple years, I was bringing two flashers up, and you see how far these holes are. They don't overlap because we have the transducer down so that it's right at, you know, at the bottom of the ice. Well, some places we're maybe in eight, nine feet of water, and there's five feet of ice, so we're only in four feet, five, four to five feet of water. So your cone angle is, is pretty narrow. It's maybe covering this much straight down the hole. So I see a fish here. I don't see it on that one. I might see if they're both blinking. I got two fish going. So it's a lot of fun, although last year it was cold and so I shared a shack with a guy. We are both sitting next to each other, me and Don. I was using two rods and he was just using one and he was out fishing me and finally I said, I'm just going to put that other one away. I paid more attention to my one rod, did everything correctly, concentrated. I caught more fish with one rod rather than monkeying around with two. You would think you would catch more with two presentations. You don't, you, you pay more attention to the one, take care of it, do things right, and you're gonna come out ahead, I think. 